Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks and I just realized that I've been remiss in my Bob's Tip series. So I wanted to do a little bit of a tip this morning talking about servos, servo travel and seals. So one of the challenging things about servos and the way that our watertight cylinders are set up is that in a traditional servo you've got an arm uh, or a horn that swings through an arc. And if you can take a look at this diagram here, if we pretend that this is our seal, you can see that there's actually quite a big difference in terms of the alignment for the um, push rod. So when the servo is centered, uh, it's going to be coming in at an angle and at each throw it's going to be coming in at as an opposite angle. Now certain seals are better for this than others. For example, these bellows seals uh, tend to have a lot more uh, forgiveness when it comes to the alignment of the push rods. But other ones, such as these uh, cup seals, or particularly these longer uh, like O-ring or cup style, style seals, really don't like being out of alignment and what happens is they will bind. So this is not a good thing. Now there's a few different solutions for that. What I have done in the past is run uh, a length of rod and then I would put a separate connection or a hinge at this point and that would go. So that hinge would take out of the equation all of the misalignment. Another solution and what I'm going to go into here today is one of these linear servo adapters and this one is coming from uh, electronic model systems. Uh, I've used it in the past, it works really really good. I'm going to show you how that is set up uh, to convert this standard servo, and this is a Futaba servo, into a linear servo. Okay, so in the package you get uh, basically your linear, linear servo adapter and a set of instructions. If we take a look at these instructions, uh, basically it is a four-part series. So you remove the horn, remove the top of the servo, put the new one on, and screw everything down. Very, very straightforward, and I'll walk through that with this servo here right now. So I'm just gonna take my uh, number one Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna remove each of the four bolts holding the servo together. All right, the bolts are out. Now I'm just going to slip the top off. Now you can see that the gears actually came out with the um, top of the servo and we don't want that to happen so we're going to take those out, put them back on our servo base. Okay, if you're ever curious as to how uh, the inside of the servo actually works, I'm going to show it to you here really briefly. This is a, a, a servo tester that I've got. You simply hook it up to 6 volt power. Uh, connect the servo. I use this a lot just to test um, servo functionality and to center them before I install them in my cylinder to make sure that I set up my linkages properly. But you can see all of the gears in place there and as I move my tester the servo cycles between its endpoints. Okay now all we do is snap on the top there and I'm just going to check it while I've got it out here. It's looking really really good to me. Now the only thing I've got left to do is put our screws back in. And there we have it, fully assembled, ready for installation, nice smooth, linear operation. So thanks a lot for joining me for this last Bob Tips, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, email me at any time, bob at rc-sub.com. Be sure to visit my website, nautilusdrydocks.com. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.